forget Frosty. Jordan Blake and his sister Nicole are sick of the hot weather in Pasadena. Just once they'd like to have a real winter. A real winter with real snow. And then it happens. The Blakes are off to Alaska. Seems that Mr. Blake has been asked to photograph a mysterious snow creature there. Poor Jordan and Nicole. They just wanted to see snow. But now they're being chased by a monstrous creature. A big furry-faced creature. Known as the Abominable Snowman. Welcome to Goosebumps Overviews. The show where we talk about Goosebump books and judge them on their merit. Tonight's episode is book number 38. The Abominable Snowman of Pasadena. What? What are you looking at? Oh. See, this is what happens when you give a six-year-old a book. <laughs> I got this at the thrift store, and let me tell you, time has not been kind to this poor bad boy. So unfortunately, this won't be a complete review of the book, because I happen to be missing the first two pages of this. But, uh... Yeah! Let's go into the cover! The cover is good. I really like the position of the snowman on the street. It's a good compare contrast of the snow and the hot weather of Pasadena. My only gripe is, is that the proportions of the snowman don't really match with the book on this cover because the snowman's is he's as big as a lamppost. But in the book he's only described as being like five six. So what the heck, Tim Jacobus? What the fuck? Other than that, uh, it's a really interesting cover. It really brings your eyes to it because of the contrast here. But I like the colors. The colors are real pretty. And the snowman has a really good design. It kind of has that Neanderthalish design. Uh, a bit what you would expect for a Yeti. Kind of like a giant ape. Which is kind of interesting because there's parts of the story that kind of remind me of King Kong. The Abominable Snowman of Pasadena involves Jordan and Nicole. Jordan's kind of, uh, well... Honestly, he's a lot like a bunch of Goosebumps characters that we talked about. Uh, most recently, he's probably a lot like Joe from Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. He's kind of got that demeanor. Nicole, however, she's the, a bit of an egghead. A, a, a know-it-all, a Lisa Simpson. But, uh, you know what, over the course of this book, she actually makes smart decisions, so... Their dad is a very famous photographer. He often goes off on these, uh, grand expeditions to get photos for books and such. Uh, this, the, this is actually the first book where the parents aren't together, at least the first one that I remember. Goosebumps first! I don't know why I'm cheering that, that's kind of sad. But uh, that is a first. Jordan and Nicole are tired of living in Pasadena. It's always so hot, it never snows. Well, unfortunately for Jordan and Nicole, they're about to get their wish. One day, Jordan and Nicole's father comes up to them, telling them that he's going on an expedition to Alaska to discover the abominable snowman. Get some pictures. And this time, he's bringing the kids along. Oh boy, that sounds like a terrible idea, uh, but who am I to judge parenting? So when they get to Alaska, that's when the story really starts. Now in the middle of nowhere, isolated from almost everyone, two kids, a photographer and a dog sledder, all trapped out in a winter tundra something out there. I like this book. It's got some really, really good parts in the middle. Really, really good tension. It deals with isolation, fear of the unknown wilderness. The main fear, I would say, in this book is 
not the snowman. It's kind of a almost a man versus nature kind of thing. But the snowman does play a part, but not the part you'd expect. This is kind of an adventure horror book, and I think it's better than most of the other adventure horror books out there, say it's uh, maybe Shock Street. One of my biggest gripes with this is, the only good part of this book is just the middle, where it takes place in Alaska. By the time they leave Alaska, the book should have ended, because that part just kind of... Yeah, it's really tacked on. Okay, so you get through 75% of the book, and then you're told the adventure is just getting started. And in my mind, I'm like, what? Okay, so a good way to explain this is, like, this book is so much like the second Jurassic Park movie, where the T-Rex, you know, attacks New York, or, uh... Jason Takes Manhattan, you know, Friday the 13th, Part 8, where, you know, Jason actually arrives in Manhattan at the very end. Yeah, see, this whole cover is a lie, because we're only in Pasadena for like, two chapters in the beginning and five chapters around the end, and we don't get much of Pasadena. We don't get a riot with the snowman running through Pasadena causing shit. No, we don't get anything. Nothing like that. Honestly, it, it's a role reversal with the snowman, because he's not what he is, what we expect. And I'm not going to get so mad at this, because I like the, the middle part charred me so much that I, I'm just not as angry. But come on. And at the very least, there's no extremely retarded situations that happen in this, because of the characters. There is one character, one character named Lauren, who at one point just acts so completely retarded that I just kind of lost my shit when I was reading it. We'll get into that for the spoiler section. So, Jordan and Nicole come across the abominable snowman when lost in the Alaskan wilderness. The dog musher, uh, Arthur, runs away because he's a coward and he basically steals all the food. What an asshole, am I right? So the snowman's frozen, but he manages to break free, and the kids think that he's going to eat them, but all he does is eat their trail mix, grab them, and then run off with them before, I think, getting scared off by the dog. And then he gets frozen again somehow. I, I mean, seriously, this all happens within the span of what I assume would be like an hour. So this snowman's frozen, breaks free, and then gets frozen again. Man, the mammoth from Sly 2 had a longer run than that. Stand clear, Sly! Something else is coming out of the deep breeze! I've never seen such a majestic creature. So full of life, so ready to live. So much for that, he's back in the deep freeze. So, the dad, he, uh, he comes across the snowman and he gets the bright idea to take the snowman back to Pasadena. How do they do this, may you ask? Well, they tie him to a dog, of course. Since the dog musher took all the dogs except one, that's all they can do. So I, they chip away at the ice, put the snowman inside like this toolbox thing, and they somehow get him ten, 10 miles back to the airport, and then all the way from Alaska back to California, Pasadena. What the f- <laughs> Okay. Oh sure, I'll, I'll, I'll suspend my disbelief, but how the f how did you pull that off, man? How could w they have this dog? I, I can't even get past the dog carrying the snowman, a plus two kids, a full grown man, and all their supplies. And that poor dog, that dog is a hero, I'll tell you that much. That dog is a hero. I dedicate this video to Lars, because... We don't, we don't know what happens to Lars. His, his owner abandoned him. Poor Lars. I want a remake of Balto with Lars, okay? That dog deserves this shit. God! Holy shit! We'll always love you! I can't believe you did this to me! God damn it! How could you do this to me? Alright, that stuff aside, they get the snowman home, and the whole story turns into uh, stay out of the dark room, that's where the snowman is. The kids decide to show off to their neighbor friend Lauren 
that there's a snowman, and uh, Jordan smuggled some snowballs in from Alaska. These aren't just any snowballs, though. These are special magic snowballs, and whenever they hit something, they get automatically frozen. Okay, the part that I love is that when they first throw the snowballs and it coats the entire lawn in snow, the retarded friend, uh, Lauren, she's just dancing around in the snow, screaming, Snow! No! No! And I'm like, oh my god. And while the kids are like actually being smart about this, and they're like, whoa, hey, let's try to figure this out and find out what's going on here, their stupid friends just start throwing snowballs at them. And, uh, yeah, it one hits the coal and she gets frozen. No, 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 not that kind of frozen, please, let's just, let's not even bring that up, okay? So, like, they try to unfreeze her by putting her in front of the oven, that doesn't work. So, Jordan comes up with the bright idea of freeing the abominable snowman, because he was, like, so warm when he was carrying them in Alaska. And they managed to free him by dangling trail mix in front of him, and I guess that somehow makes him break out of the ice. And the snowman, he... He basically, he hugs Nicole, unfreezes her, unfreezes all the, uh, the tree and the lawn from all the other snowballs, and runs away. And all the pictures that uh, Jordan's father took, none of that pans out because apparently the abominable snowman, he's like a vampire, you can't take a photo of him. And then of course there's the dark ending where the kids try to hide the snowballs by burying them, but they end up stupidly burying them right next door to two bully kids. And those bully kids find them, and what do they do? Well, I'll give you a hint. The last word in this book is thwack. Alright guys, so my review on this book is as simple as this. Middle, amazing, end, sucktacular. So what do we get from that? I'm gonna have to give this book a five out of ten. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for my review on The Abominable Snowman of Pasadena. Hope you enjoyed and make sure to stay tuned for next episode when we talk about how I got my shrunken head. Have a scary